Growing up, we've been taught all kinds of things about God. God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing. God created the entire universe. I once saw in a movie they were parodying religion and the, the reverend, the pastor, was leading the group in prayer and the prayer was, Oh God, ooh, you are so big, so really, really huge. Gosh, we're all really impressed down here, I can tell you that. That's what we've been taught. <clears throat> but this God, who is all powerful, who is all knowing, as I say to people from time to time, sometimes we forget to see God in other ways as well. To see God as being reasonable, loving, merciful, understanding. But folks, when they come to confession, it seems that so many are afraid to accept that. I've got to list every single little thing because those are the things that offended God. I've got to confess as serious sins, even the things that I forgot about, or the things that I did completely by accident or completely by misunderstanding. Where's our understanding of a loving, caring, compassionate God in all of that? He's mighty. The last several months, I have been trying to adapt my own style of leading prayer. Very often the prayer that is presented starts off addressing God as Almighty God. I've tried to move away from that a little bit. Sometimes I forget. But that God doesn't look almighty. Simon Tugwell once said, there is something about God that is better expressed in weakness than in strength. And Jaka Uhl in his book wrote, no matter what God's power may be, the first aspect of God is never that of the absolute master, the Almighty. It is that of the God who puts himself on our human level and limits himself. That's the God who loves us. That's the God who cares about each and every one of us so much. He understands our lives. A lot of times when we don't understand our own lives, We don't like to not be in control. We're afraid that others might see us as weak. Weakness, bad thing.
how many of our young people just feel so driven in high school. They feel so much pressure on them, driven by perfectionism. They think that's what's expected of them. They think that's what they need to be. Anything less than perfect is weakness. As we get older, we don't like being in control. We don't like if we can't do everything for ourselves the way that we could before. If other people have to help me, it's a sign of weakness. But we're reminded by Paul today in weakness God's strength is made perfect when I am weak it is then that I am strong because when I come to the point of accepting that I cannot do it all by myself that I cannot be all things that I can't be as impressive as I'd like to be. And lo and behold, I leave some room for God. How about that? I was at an extended workshop for priests and counselors and caregivers. And one of the presenters, he said something so, so powerful to me because it confronted me. It hit me right between the eyes. He said, for those of you that are in a helping profession, If you will not let other people help you, then you have no right and no business trying to help others. Because it's not ministry. I expect other people to be okay with their shortcomings. And I'll be there for them. Those poor people. But for me, no way. I don't need that. Without realizing it, I'm saying I am better than these poor schlubs that are fortunate enough to get my help. I appreciate it when other people ask for my help. But if I'm never willing to reach out my other hand and ask for help as well, then I never let anybody else share in that feeling. I never let anybody else have the opportunity to give. Think about it, the times in our lives when we have been the most down, when we have felt the least worthwhile. If we have allowed God to be part of our struggle, to be part of our sorrow, to be part of our suffering, Those have been the most graced times. We 
because we've been able to set our ego aside and let grace work instead. We get so hung up on strength, power, control. We forget the real force of gentleness and love and caring. And if you need a reminder of that, folks, go see the new Mr. Rogers documentary. I guarantee you. It'll be a tonic. When I am weak, it is then that I can be strong. If I let you help me, Lord, not do it for me. I won't become passive and just sit back and say, okay, Lord, I can't do anything. But hey, Lord, together, together, we're a good team. I'm stronger with you than without you. Lord, help me to remember that. Sometimes I'm so strong-headed. And it just doesn't work.